Hey everyone, it's Michael Dougal with eXp Real Estate and today I'm going to address the very important question, should you avoid a discount real estate agent? Of course, with the average price continuously trending upward, the commission checks will naturally rise and we're gonna see a lot of discount agents out there. And if you're a homeowner like myself, then you've probably gotten some sort of mail or literature come by from agents that are willing to discount their services in order to list your property, all of which we'll address in this video. But first, I've got more buyers than I have sellers. We've got buyers looking for homes to choose from. So if you're considering selling your home, then do call me, my number is 416 15218. And if you're a potential buyer looking for property and looking for deals, then do visit my website, torontorealestatenow.com. And let's get right into the video. So the great news is, yes, if you are choosing to sell your home, real estate commissions are negotiable. And this is the reason why you're very likely to come across agents that are willing to do it for more than usual and less than usual. So the obvious question comes, why should I go with a higher commission agent versus a lower commission agent? All of which I'm gonna address in this video with four important points. Okay, so point number one as far as why you should avoid a discount real estate agent is because when you stop and think about it, really what's most important is the end result. How much money you get in your pocket after real estate commissions. If it's such that you are willing to pay less for commission, but you don't sell the home for top dollar, the most amount of money that the property is able to realize, then clearly is if you ask the agents whom you're interviewing, of your previous transactions, what is the average list to sales price ratio? And they should have the answer to that. Like me, for example, my average listing is selling at 99.3% of asking price, whereas I believe in the general GTA over the past 12 months, it's somewhere around 98% of the asking price. In summary, I mean, the agent, it's their service at the end of the day, and I can't tell you why that is. It's a secret. We have to spend a lot of money to market the property and make sure it gets the most exposure possible, which is essentially why you wanna hire an agent that is willing to provide you full service and get you top dollar. All right, now point number two as far as why you should avoid a discount agent is because really there is no incentive for them to sell the home for a great price. A lot of agents are offering less commission and they're really looking at it more of like a numbers game. But the larger the commission, the more the actual incentive is to sell the home for the best price possible. And when everything's said and done, if you are to look at a discount agent and how much money they're actually making, let's say it's a $10,000 commission check, I mean, once you take away brokerage expenses and then they have to pay taxes, they may not be left with that much for them to really be a full-time agent in any case, and they're probably off on different ventures. Although, of course, whether you're a full-time agent or a part-time agent, I respect all agents in the industry. As a matter of fact, I just did a transaction with an agent that was actually a full-time engineer and all the paperwork from them was solid. I was very impressed with their work, but I would never recommend a seller to hire a part-time agent for something as big as selling their home. This is a very big responsibility at the end of the day. There's a lot of money on the line here. And similarly to something very important, let's say getting knee surgery, you would want the best surgeon possible because clearly in a lot of cases, when it comes to service-based industries, you get what you pay for. Okay, let's switch gears. Point number three as far as why you should avoid a discount commission agent to sell your home is because likely the agent is not doing much business therefore they have less buyers in their buyer pool or their sphere of influence when you're looking for an agent you want to make sure you're hiring somebody that's well connected well connected amongst other agents well connected with potential buyers somebody with a lot of signs and a lot of listings out for sale as naturally the more signs an agent has the more frequently they're being contacted by buyers. Listing with an agent that's not doing much business, I'm not gonna say they won't sell your home, but likely they're relying on the MLS versus having their own buyers or be well connected with some of the agents that are likely to have buyers. And now point number four, and this is the important one, is that they're likely using your home as bait in order to get attention or to attract potential buyers. For those of you that have sold your home already, you probably understand that the real estate commissions are divided in half and the buyer agent is usually rewarded something like 2.5% or perhaps sometimes 2.25%. And then the listing agent side is somewhat variable. So if the listing agent side is actually at a reduced rate, that means that they would be getting more money if they actually got a buyer to buy something else. When you think about it, if an agent's holding an open house and a buyer attends the property, 
the agent is more incentivized if they go take that buyer, show them another house and sell them that house and get the 2.5% there. And they're leveraging that listing as a marketing tool in order for them to get attention and to get buyers so that they can continuously sell homes and generate leads. I know this sounds a bit far-fetched and kind of crazy, but believe me, if you know people in the business, you ask them, this is a real thing. Listings generate a lot of attention. So one of the first things that agents are taught when they become an agent in order to get training to get clients is, Hold an open house because you'll meet prospective buyers and you'll get your name out there without any intention on actually selling the subject property. Uh, there's been studies in on this. I think it's something like maybe 2% of homes are sold via an open house, whereas the other 98% are important things like listings being exposed on the internet, agent to agent interaction or the agent personally having their own buyers. I mean, would you want to hire an agent that really doesn't care whether or not your home sells because they're using it to brand themselves? I know if I was selling my house, I certainly wouldn't feel comfortable with that. I know this is a little bit of a different style video as typically I'm doing things like market updates or talking about trends or how to take advantage of the market, but I hope you appreciated this content. <laughs> I know my agent friends that are watching this, you're probably really enjoying this. So make sure to give this a thumbs up, click subscribe. And if you're a real estate agent, that's looking for opportunity, irregardless of whether or not you're in the greater Toronto area. Maybe you're, if you're in Florida or if you're in somewhere in California, for all of my friends out there in California, shout out to you. Then do call me. I recently switched brokerages over to eXp Realty, where I'm an owner and I'm looking for people to partner with. So if that's something of interest to you, then call me as well. My number is 416-671-5218. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.